This lesson is going to be on related rates, which um, related rates have been hated by every calculus student <laughs> since, since calculus one was taught. Uh, so what are related rates about? Well, you, you might guess that since um, it's called related rates, then you would be relating two different rates. Okay, and, that, and that's basically what these problems are. You might have two or more different values that vary with time. So that, that's what a rate is. For example, mile, miles per hour, uh, that's a rate. Um, so questions like this, uh, imagine you're traveling like uh, northeast. Well, if you were traveling northeast, you would be traveling north at a certain rate and you would be traveling east at a certain rate. So those two relate, those two rates would be related um, by how fast you were tra uh, traveling northeast altogether. So th these are the type of questions. Um, so I, I think it's best if we do an example so you can kind of see what's going on and how to solve these things. Um, so in all the related rate problems, they have to a, give you one rate or two rates. So for this problem, um, maybe I should start by saying, uh, this right here is the equation of this circle. This is a circle centered at the origin with radius five. And I've got this dot or particle on the circle and just imagine it's traveling around the circle or maybe it's going the other way, but I've got this dot traveling around the circle. Okay, so this is, uh, this is the, si uh, the setting of our problem. Now the related rate problems, they have to give you a rate. So here, the rate that they give you is dx over dt is 12. So let me explain this. This means that the particle is traveling in the x direction at a rate of 12 units per unit of time. So this dx dt, uh, it also means x prime if, if you like using that notation better or maybe your professor taught it to you that way. Um, but remember that derivatives are just rates of change. So this is basically saying that the derivative of x in respect to t is 12. So they have to give you a rate they also have to ask you for a rate. So in this case, they're asking what's dy over tt? What's the rate of change in the y direction? And if you like, again, you can rate this like y prime. So they have to give you a rate or rates and they have to ask you for a rate and they have to tell you when or uh, in this case, where. So they have to give you a rate, they have to t ask for a rate, and they gotta tell you when or where. And in this case, the point is at three comma four. Three comma four. So that's our when or where. And these would be given in the problem. Um, I could also write this like x equals three and y equals four, if you like. Uh, so this is the setup. Okay, you've got to have a, an equation relating everything, relating the rates. They have to give you a rate, ask you for a rate, and tell you when, or in this case, where. That's just the setup. We haven't actually done any calculus yet. So um, let me go ahead and erase my picture. I don't really need my picture. All I really need is uh, this equation. Now, of course, you learn related rates after you've learned derivatives. More specifically, you learn related rates after you learn implicit differentiation. And that's very important because we are going to take the derivative of this equation using implicit differentiation. Now up to this point, you've used implicit differentiation to take the derivative uh, dy over dx, or basically you've been taking the derivative in respect to x. Related rates, since they are rates, we are taking the derivative in respect to time, in respect to t. 
So I'm going to take the derivative of both sides in respect to t. So remember from implicit differentiation, whenever we took the derivative of y, we multiplied by y prime or dy over dx because we are taking the derivative in respect to x. And we didn't have to do that with the x variables because they were x variables. But here, every variable, we're going to have to multiply by d that variable over dt. Let me show you what I mean. So the derivative of x squared is 2x. We all know the power rule. But since it's implicit differentiation in respect to time, I need to multiply by dx over dt. That's the kicker. And then the derivative of y squared is 2y, but I need to multiply by dy over dt because of implicit differentiation equals the derivative of a constant, 25 is still 0. Now, look what happened. These rates, these dy over dt and dx over dt that we talked about setting up the problem have now appeared magically. <laughs> So what do you think I'm going to do? I'm going to start filling in the information that I know. So I've got, I've got 2, x. What was x? x was 3. dx over dt, what was that? That was 12. I'm going to put parentheses there. Plus 2y, what was y? y was 4. dy over dt, what was dy over dt? We don't know, that's what the question was asking for. So that's what I'm going to solve for algebraically. So the way that we do this is we take the equation, we take the derivative using implicit differentiation, we plug in all the numbers, and then we solve for the rate that they want. So, um, Actually, you know, I could divide both sides of this equation by 2 if I wanted. That'll just make my calculations a little easier. So 0 divided by 2 is still 0. So I'm just going to cancel these 2s, if you don't mind. Make it a little bit easier. And then 3 times 12, I think that's 36, plus 4 dy over dt. And now I'm just solving for this algebraically, so I'll subtract 36. I'll have 4 dy over dt equals minus 36. And if I divide both sides by 4, I think we're going to get dy over dt is negative 36 over 4, which is negative 9. So that would be our final answer. Which means on that circle that I drew, at the point 3 comma 4, the point 3, 4, if our particle is moving at a rate of 12 in the x direction, it must be moving at a rate of negative 9 in the y direction. And that kind of makes sense. If I draw this little circle, we were right here. If I'm moving 12 in the x direction, that means I'm going that way, right? I gotta, if I'm going positive x, I'm gonna go to the right. But if I'm going, if I'm going to the right in the x direction and I'm right here, that means my particle is moving down in the y direction. So that's another kind of intuitive reason why this is a negative answer. So you will get negative rates sometimes if you're uh, moving backwards or you're uh, draining tubs, that sort of thing. Um, so there you go. That's pretty much how almost all related rates problems are going to be. They are going to give you a rate or rates. They're going to ask you for a rate and tell you when, or in this case, where. And then you need an equation that relates all of your variables. You'll take the derivative of that equation using implicit differentiation. You'll plug in all of your known values, and then you'll algebraically solve for the rate that they asked for. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. Have a great day.